Good morning, classic fans. Let's send the week off with a bang with some countdown to classic. This is a podcast that educates, informs, and gossips about World of Warcraft classic. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we discuss the news, hot button issues, and content of the highly anticipated World of Warcraft classic. I'm your host, Josh Corbett, and thank you for joining me here on Countdown. Down to classic. Well, this week has had to turn into interview week here on the show due to some real life obligations of mine. But that's great as so many of you tell me that you're loving these interviews. And believe me, there's plenty more to come as I love talking to people who have such amazing insights into vanilla World of Warcraft. However, after today, I've cleaned out the closet of interviews. I've got a few more lined up and interviewees scheduled and ready to go, but what I'd love from you is suggestions or volunteers to be featured on the show. Are you the number one frost mage in the land? Or perhaps you're the greatest PvP shaman who ever lived? Get in touch with me at feedback at countdowntoclassic.com. Now, today we'll be hearing an amazing interview with listener of the show and role-playing veteran King Mike, who talks everything and anything role-playing in the game. Covering off on a lot of common misconceptions, which is awesome as Countdown to Classic continues to bring you interesting voices to help expand your knowledge and appreciation for all things vanilla World of Warcraft. You know the drill by now, people. In my interviews, none of the questions are pre-screened and no favours or payments have been exchanged for an interviewee's appearance. Now, unfortunately, there's no calling Countdown this episode again as I haven't quite had the time, but that segment will come roaring back with a vengeance soon, I promise. Now, how about we get straight into it and hear from King Mike in this great, in-depth interview. Okay, so a big countdown to classic hello to listener of the show and role-playing veteran, King Mike. How are you? Doing good, man. Excited to be on the show. No, thank you so much for coming on the show. Now, just for the listener's benefit, you reached out to me a few weeks ago now and told me that you'd be happy to talk at length about all things role-playing in World of Warcraft. And in preparation for that, you and I went on a little bit of an adventure together, didn't we? Yeah, adventure is um, not the most colorful word for it. Yeah, it was, it was an adventure for sure. It was quite the experience, and we'll, we'll get into the details of that later on. But just so that everyone is fully aware of who you are and what you've had to do with World of Warcraft in the past, how about we go through your World of Warcraft resume over the next five minutes or so? Are you ready? Ready. Okay. Question number one, King Mike, with as much specificity as you're comfortable with, where in the world are you from? I'm in uh, the United States, in the state of Georgia, about an hour north of Atlanta. Okay, and how long have you played World of Warcraft? Uh, since 2004. And so, okay, yep. Since launch, but on and off. So I came in for expansions and then left and things like that. So not constantly the whole time. Were you day one or just a few weeks after? About a month or so. A buddy of mine's dad introduced us both to it. Okay. What was your original main character's name? Uh, Kryptonite. And what class and race did you play? Uh, the original was a human paladin. And what other classes have you hit a level cap with since? Well, the character I played the most since launch was an arms warrior, uh, his name, a human arms warrior named Herthen. And he's the character I've played in every single expansion since. And what server did you play on when you started, or what server are you playing on now? So I started on Argent Dawn, and that was a, an RP server. And then I moved over to an RP PvP server, because I really enjoy PvP, called Twisted Nether. And um, after a little while on there, I moved over to Move Guard. <laughs> very nice. Uh, that's now a word that, or a phrase that I'm very familiar with. Um, yeah. What is your highest raid experience, if any? The most active time I was raiding was during Burning Crusade. So that was doing a lot of Karzan, a lot of uh, Ghoul's Lair, and uh, Black Temple and places like that. Mostly at PvP, though. Okay. Uh, and you're currently still playing the game, is that right? Actually, yeah, I just started back up because uh, really wanting to play Classic again 
made me just kind of want to play World of Warcraft again. So I've actually kind of been enjoying retail a little bit right now. It's very different and a lot easier, but it's kind of fun. I know that feeling. That's pretty much what started this show. Now, do you have a quick plug for anything? Are you on YouTube? Do you stream or produce any content or anything like that? Where can people find you online? Uh, no, no, I don't do anything like that. Uh, just no. Fair, just fair enough. Really. If people want to chat with you, they can just jump in the countdown to classic discord and say hi. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm always happy to talk to people. Okay, final question. Complete this sentence so we know where your allegiances lie. For the... Alliance. Okay, all right, it's about time we got someone saying that. There's been so many <laughs> Horde players. All right, we're getting... So I think someone reached out the other day and said, uh, Josh, everyone you interview is from the Horde. Can we get some balance happening? All right. I, I probably didn't say that with enough enthusiasm, but... Oh, well. <laughs> Just whispering it under your breath, uh, for the Alliance? Okay. <laughs> Um, so before we break down, uh, the trip that you and I took into Moonguard the other day, but I'm also going to upload it to YouTube once this episode is published. So once you've heard this episode, everyone, please do feel free to jump onto YouTube within a day or two of this going up. I will have put up King Mike and I's trip into Moonguard, but we'll get there soon. I just want to start with a few introductory questions for you, King Mike, about role playing in general. Now, did you role play from the very start when you began world of warcraft no no so i didn't sort of jump in or figure out even though i was on an rp server i didn't actually start for probably three or four months or so and then even then it wasn't really in a uh, a very full-time capacity it was just something that i figured out and dabbled in and then obviously enjoyed and picked up more later but i guess at least you knew you wanted to be on a role-playing server even though you weren't engaging in it if you know what i mean um, at, as far as the, this, why I started on, on Argent Dawn was because my, my buddy's dad, uh, was on that server. I don't know why he was, but because my buddy's dad was on that server, my buddy was on that server. And then when I eventually got my own account and was borrowing theirs, I rolled on that server, obviously. Okay. Had you, uh, role played in anything before this? No, World of Warcraft was the first time, but I have uh, in other games and uh, forums since. Okay, so there was no, like, LARPing going on or anything before this? No, no, and I've, I've never LARPed either, so. Okay, now just explain to the listeners at as a lighter level to start with as we can, just about role-playing. How does a person, let's say mechanics-wise, get into role-playing? How do you do it? Such as, you know, like switching in and out of character and things like that. Right. So it's dominantly going to be done through, um, I guess, everything that you type in slash, uh, slash say and then slash emote. And then I guess by proxy slash yell, though most people don't really use yell because it's kind of obnoxious. But, um, it, yeah, it would be through that. And then the RP community has also developed add-ons that help with identifying characters who are, quote, in character and out of character. Um, the most popular being one called just My Role Play. And in there you can have, like, a description of your character, their name, title, little backstory, and things like that. And there's also a little option to say uh, in character or out of character to mm. indicate whether you're actually role-playing or not. So what kind of grammar or or uh, things would you enter to make it quite clear that you are not currently speaking in character? Um, so there, you would use uh, two parentheses is the most common way of sort of indicating uh, something that you're definitively saying out of character. Now, if let's just say I'm doing an instance and I'm or a raid or PvP and I'm talking in party or raid, that's always going to be out of character and all our peers will... Uh, you know, follow that. Okay. And starting out with your character, did you tackle this once you decided you knew you wanted to start role playing? Did you come up with a backstory for your character or how did it all work for you personally? Well, <laughs> well for the original character, uh, his name was Kryptonite. And obviously that's not an RP name. So the first step actually was I reported myself to Blizzard and they gave me a free name change because RP servers have, uh, they, they don't really enforce the names very much, but if you have a name that, you know, isn't RP friendly, like, you know, like a, like a fantasy-esque name, then I, he actually gave me a free name change back in the day. So that was nice. 
So my dream of calling a character Captain Teabag on a role-playing server would not happen. You can have that character, but as far as I'm peeing him, no one will take you serious. <laughs> okay. Well, that's kind of the next question is that when you engage with the community, um, how does one sort of promote engagement and capture the attention of fellow role players? So we are pretty active on the forums. So there will be um, on on the official WoW forums. I'm, I'm actually not really sure about the Reddit, but then also on uh, places like, um, I mean, more recently now, uh, what's Engine? Now there will be like a you know like a WoW RP and things like that. Just we use the forums in our online and we advertise our guilds just like other people do. But then we also have places that are what we'd call RP hubs. So usually they're like inns and taverns and games where people uh, will gather. And if you're trying to advertise your guild within the community, you would do so there. And mentioning that, obviously, that Moonguard run that we had the other day, one thing I noticed, if you can tell people, if you jump into the game as a level one, obviously, what kind of interactions can people expect if they think they can just jump into things and start speaking to people from there? Yeah. And in, in that aspect, RP is similar to, uh, to rating in that um, at being at level one, you're not exactly going to be involved in much because people can't really, you know, judge your, I guess, effort in the game as a level one character. You're obviously only wearing the starting um, outfits and things like that. So in many ways, you will get ignored by, by most of the community, mainly because uh, the community is so um, jaded by trolls. Usually level one characters will be people that are running around to troll or uh, we, we call them RP griefers. So people that will do their best to, you know, annoy, get in the way, spam, etc. So level one characters, we kind of lean towards ignoring them for that, ignoring them for that reason. And these RP griefers, are they quite prevalent? Yes. Yes, very. Um, it's it's a very uh, popular thing that when you... Because, I mean, I can understand the negative connotation that RP has in many ways. So when people come across and see people RPing sitting around a table, you know, sometimes minutes between anything being said, because writing takes some time, um, people will jump in on their mouths and just, you know, rear their horse over and over again or spam yelling or, you know, say something stupid. Mm. And when you talk about that negative connotation of role playing, why do you think that has come up? And what would you have to say to people who have perhaps a neutral or negative view of role playing? Um, I mean, the most prevalent one now, obviously, on Moonguard is uh, what's called is Goldshire in the, the Lions Pride Inn, otherwise nicknamed Pornshire, which we obviously explored in that mm-hmm. video, mm-hmm. which is a the center and hub of um, ERP, ERP, erotic role play, which is just people, you know, instead of role playing out the storyline, you're role playing having sex with each other. Mm-hmm. So that's one big one. The other one is that, you know, you mentioned LARPing earlier people running around and pretending that they're, you know, in another universe and things like that can seem a little on the extreme end of nerdy Mm -hmm. as it were. Mm -hmm. And so that, I think that's another side where the the negative connotation comes in of just, it it just seems weird. So if you were talking to people that think that that's all there is to role playing, what would you have to say to them in terms of actually there's much more to it? Um, I guess it just comes down to, uh, what aspect of role playing you're sort of looking at? So there's, it's sort of like when when a guild's advertising, they'll generally qualify themselves into one of three tiers. There'll be light, medium, and heavy. Now, light would just be, you know, very. It, it's not going to be very descriptive. It's just people who, you know, maybe want to RP their way through a dungeon or just, you know, sit in a tavern and talk and things like that. And then on the other end of it, heavy is actually story driven. And that's where my focus has been. And that's why I'd say, uh, you know, you can make an argument for being maybe redeemable because it's more about um, the, the quality of writing, telling a story, uh, I guess an interactive story, because you're not just, you know, writing on your own word document. There's actually a world around you. There's other people writing back to you, which, you know, it, it, being an MMORPG, that's what kind of makes RPing so much more fun is when, you're doing it with other people. So you're not just sitting in a room on your own writing a story. You're, you know, creating an interactive story with other people, 
which is similar, I think, to uh, why so many people enjoy Dungeons and Dragons. So what kind of effect has role playing in the game had on your World of Warcraft experience? Uh, well, well, I've made some amazing friends, uh, just like everybody else. And I think that's maybe something that people don't understand is, you know, I'm as much a you know, World of Warcraft player as you guys. I have, you know, those friendships that I've built over a very long time with people. And sure, we repeat a lot, but we also played other aspects of the game. And um, I guess. Would you say that it's greatly increased your enjoyment of the game or kind of not affected it much at all? Oh, absolutely. It's, I mean, it's given sort of a heightened focus, as it were, in certain parts. Like, um, for example, like some people, you know, just want to grind dungeons and raids and things like that to just get the best gear so they can do the most DPS. But another part with RPing is obviously you kind of have to look the part. So if there's like a sword that looks cool or an armor set that looks cool, you take the time to do that. And it kind of adds more motivation to playing the game in that way. Well, you mentioned earlier that light, medium, or heavy tag that you can kind of designate to yourself when you're starting to role play. What would you describe yourself as? Oh, absolutely heavy. And and that's uh, – there's there's also a negative connotation, obviously, with heavy RPers because we're sort of – some people view us as like lore Nazis or grammar Nazis and things like that because we like good writing and we don't like, you know, say – a character named Kryptonite in World of Warcraft. Well, it's it's funny that you mentioned, obviously, the connotations that one might draw with people who are tagged as heavy role players. And I'm guilty of this myself. I'm, I'm more than happy to ashamedly admit that, sure, I have a stereotype of certain people who get heavily involved in the role playing of World of Warcraft. Then I spoke with you, and I must admit, we obviously spoke off, uh, off mic a little bit or off interview, and we started shooting the shit, and you were telling me how um, you're a big sports fan and... Uh, uh, you you know you just come back from a, a, a bit of fun at, at a brewery uh, another night and uh, we started chatting and we sounded like the kind of guys I don't know I felt like the you know I would absolutely grab a beer with you in real life but my concept of a role player is something someone that I thought I wouldn't necessarily get along with so I guess the moral of the story is what I'm saying is is it the fact that don't be surprised by who role plays because it's just absolutely anyone absolutely yeah I would say that's definitely the case we're just kind of another um, another gamer, really, or well, I guess person first and then gamer second. But um, it's just another way that we enjoy the game. You know, we're all paying for this game and we're all looking to... We play games because they're fun, they relieve stress, and it's, you know, a good way to spend time with people that we enjoy spending time with. So RP is just an extension of that. It's another way that we do that. All right, here we go. Breaking down stereotypes one step at a time. I like it. Now, King Mike, uh, you mentioned earlier um, very, very briefly just about um, PVE and running instances and things like that. Now, we got a question from a listener named Tarocco, who's been another interviewee on the show, who asked this of you. King Mike, do people role play while doing instance runs? And how does that work if you do? So I, I know that people do. I have not personally so the the reason for um there's sort of the role player that that might role play all the time and rps their characters if they're doing all the different quests and they're the ones who are you know they're the one who killed van cleef and all these sorts of things and then there are those that just sort of remove themselves from that world because um not remove themselves from the world but don't have their characters being i guess uh focal to the the actual world of warcraft storyline because that you know everybody completes those quests those quests so to have your character say that they were the one that killed van cleave isn't fair to everybody else who's killed van cleave for example so in a dungeon setting for people who do rp in dungeon or dungeon slash instances it i've never actually participated in it but i imagine it would be similar to what other rp is which is you're you know pretending that you're your character and you're riding your way through, you know, killing all the different characters. I imagine it would take much longer, which is why I would never RP in an instance. Um, but on the, on the flip side of it, I have actually cleared out instances to use them as, um, the, to use the settings as an, like a place to RP, but never, uh, 
RP'd, you know, talking to my friends and my fellow adventurers being like, all right, guys, we got to kill Van Cleef. And then we go off and we kill him. I've, I've never done that. So appreciating that you've never done it, have you bumped into many players in pickup groups and things like that who try to do it? Or for the most part in your experience, do people just get down to business in instances? Uh, for the most part, people just get down to business in instances. In RP servers, I've, I've never come across someone who wanted to RP their way through the instance. Usually, the people who I've, I've spoken to who have done it, it's it's a guild event sort of thing. They they do it with you know five other pl- or four other players that they know. But if they it was, don't impose it upon randoms, sure. But if it was the world's greatest healer or tank, you'd probably tolerate it. I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, actually. Um, and there's a funny story about this really good gnome tank who RP'd that they had a limp and they were really, really good. I, I didn't know this person, but I heard the story. And so they were a gnome tank that had a limp. And so they would walk like through their character with a limp, like just tap the forward button. And this tank was so good that in places like Molten Core and Anixia and things like that, I think it was particularly on Anixia, they would have like warlocks in place to summon him to other parts of the room or something like that, just because of how good this tank was, but he refused to, to move without the limp. Wow. That's, we need an extra category for that guy, like uh, extra, extra heavy role play. Yeah. We usually we dub them as hardcore epic role players. Like they're like the Don Quixote. There's if like, anyone knows who that is. Their name is in orange. I'm guessing. <laughs> 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 All right. So, Keeping um, that in mind, and you hear stories about people like that that took it to the extremes, how did you feel or how do you feel when you bump a, when you come across other players on role-playing realms that you try to engage with who don't take it super seriously? So a lot of times you might even go to the extreme where you just RP with your guild. So you, you, know, you have your guild mates and you kind of ignore everyone else in there. I've been in guilds like that before, but... Uh, only briefly, but as far as you know, people who don't write as well or don't take it as seriously, I mean, the community has its ups and downs, just like the WoW community at large. You have your, I mean, your heavy RPers can sometimes be as uh, obnoxious as your extremely hardcore raiders or your, you know, hardcore PVPers and things like that. So who will, you know, straight up just ignore people? Similarly to a raider would, you know, call you a noob and things like that. So it it comes down to. I guess the, the individual person and the tolerance that they have for me, I try to just still interact with those people because I remember when I started RPing, uh, people had to put up a lot with me because I was a pretty shitty writer and I was, um, you know, I was not very good at it. And, uh, I had my character doing some pretty stupid things, saying some stupid things and things like that. So I, you know, a lot of us try to extend that olive branch and sort of like teach lower quality role players to be better. Similarly to a lot of players try to, teach you know lower level or newer players to play their classes better and things like that now i'm I'm glad that you touched on that because my follow-up was basically going to be if someone is considering playing on a role-playing realm but perhaps is being held back by a lack of confidence in their writing skills is it still something that they should try and tackle because there are people that will be open and try to help them out yeah, yeah, and the best way to do that will really be to to find a guild that's that's open to that. Guilds will, you know, advertise, advertise as light RP or medium RP because they're willing to work with and teach new players, whereas heavy RPers, I mean, it, it's not that they're bad people or anything like that. They just don't have the time of day because they have, you know, they want to enjoy the game. They don't want to, you know, for example, to give the rate equivalent, they don't want to bring somebody who's incredibly undergeared along that might you know, make them wipe a lot more and make the process a lot longer. It's a similar thing with role playing in that if, you know, someone doesn't write properly or you have to interrupt and correct them on certain rules that they may or may not be breaking, or you're just not understanding what they're writing, it sort of slows that down and kind of ruins the enjoyability for people. Have you come across instances where you've seen people kicked out of a guild because they basically had a bad attitude and they weren't trying very hard to keep up with the role play? I've I've never seen anyone kicked from a guild. Um, I have seen them sort of not maybe not excluded from I guess what we would call RP events or story events and things like that, but 
not like openly invited to smaller things. So there's a, it, it's more of like a shun than a guild kick, I suppose. You would only really get kicked from a guild if you're being, you know, a jerk or griefing or um, just never showing up and just offline for massive periods of time. Okay. Now you just mentioned, and I think you might've mentioned it earlier, RP events and story events. If we just go a little bit more into detail with what guilds will organize on those fronts. Sure. So, I, I mean, I guess the best way to do that would just be um, an example. So uh, one storyline that I participated in back, I, I can't remember uh, when this would have been in WoW, but it was in World of Warcraft where uh, one character's dad was the head of a, a coven of warlocks and things like that. So, um, and he had run away from said coven and his father wanted him back. So he was threatening to kill his friends and everybody he cared about and so on. So over the course of multiple events, we, you know, similarly to a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, um, planned our attack on his um, dungeon, uh, scouted. So like the first event would be, you know, we sit down and, you know, it, it's explained by someone that, you know, there's this problem. The second event would be, we role play scouting out and figuring out what we're going to do about it. The third is actually, um, you know, let's just say it's a, in this particular case, it was a really, really long cave that took to it. So we RP'd our way through that cave using uh, deadlines actually is the location. And then the final part was fighting these warlocks and then killing them. And this was done over a few weeks. Very cool. Now, tell me, how would you describe Blizzard's attitude towards role play and, I guess, facilitation of role playing within the game? Do you think they've done it appropriately, or they could do a little bit more for you? I mean, having played other MMOs, I mean, the first thing that they did was they obviously gave us RP servers where, if you know, someone actively uh griefs in our peer by you know spamming slash yell and dancing and things like that and calling us silly names or whatever the heck they're going to do if we reported them and enough people reported them we they would get suspended and if they had enough offenses they could get banned so i would say as far as what i've seen in other games versus what blizzard's done i think they're better than most companies as far as trying to um cater to this play style that we have have you ever been in a situation where you felt the need to call someone out who's really going nuts with the griefing? Um, I've never done it because I don't want to, you know, someone's paid money for the game and just because, you know, they're kind of being a little bit of an asshole maker. So I don't know if I can curse, but, um, no, being, no, go for it. Know, I encourage it. <laughs> yeah. Being, okay. Well, yeah, they're being a little bit of an asshole and I, I'll just put them on ignore. And it, I mean, I'm already having to use my imagination to imagine the things that people are writing at me. So it's easy enough to just ignore and imagine that a dancing naked gnome with pink hair and a really nice mustache isn't really there. Mm. Well, you mentioned using your imagination and you talked about this main character that you're currently basically have been playing for quite some time now. Uh, I think it was a warrior named Herthen. Is that right? Correct. Okay. So with that particular character, what kind of events or backstories have you forged for him? Are there are there light dot points that you just touch on every now and again with that character, or do you have it all written out? So I I have mountains of things written out for him. It's not just been entirely things that I've I've uh, you know written out and repeated with people in game, which I have logs up actually for in many cases. But I've written out large chunks of his backstory. Uh, in-depth physical descriptions because uh, <laughs> World of Warcraft has a really bad character creator. Mm. So uh, a description is kind of a little bit more necessary uh, to, you know, there's eight human faces, I think. So <laughs> you kind of have to differentiate yourself somehow and you can't show scars. So if he has any, you have to write this out. But no, I have a pretty in-depth repertoire of, uh, of writing that I've, that I've done for him. And as far as his backstory too, I mean, it, it's having played him as long as I have, uh, the backstory now includes things that I've actually done with him in game as opposed to just things that I created before I started RPing. So what are some of the cooler things that old Herthen has done? Is he like a grizzled sort of Vietnam vet-esque, like, you know, veteran of the second war in Warcraft or what did he get up to? Yeah, so um, he was uh, born in Strumgard, 
and actually was around when the city was uh, overtaken by by ogres. And I believe that was in the oh man, it's been such a long time. I don't know which. I don't. I think it was the second war. I can't actually one hundred percent recall. But uh, he was around for that. Had a uh, every role player sort of creates a, a tragic backstory for their character. It's kind of a very common thing. Just you know, like Batman's parents are both dead and things like that. So I decided that he was going to have a a, a wife and an unborn child that were killed during this assault, and that obviously, you know, creates some tension and uh, you know makes him gritty and things like that. Mm. Now, touching on something you just raised again, just going back to that moment that we went through Moon Garden. Obviously, we started in Goldshire because that was something that I had to see, but then we moved into Stormwind City to get a bit more of an idea of the general role player. And something that you just mentioned, and, and something that I noticed straight away, was the sheer amount of kind of the the melancholy role player. What can you tell people about that and why it's so uh, prevalent within the game? Well, well, people, the the characters that they create are usually inspired by characters that they love in fantasy, right? They, I mean, people love Batman. People love, um, you know, sort of tragic characters like that. Because you're, you know, and the reason that those characters have those bad, is those bad backstories is obviously it's, it's, it's why they became heroes. It's why they decided to do what they wanted to do. So similarly to, you know, so many of our favorite, you know, fantasy and comic book characters having those tragic and those sad and those serious backgrounds and things like that, players, you know, sometimes aren't, uh, there's only so many tropes, I guess, that you can, that you can borrow from. So a lot of characters have tragic backgrounds because it's just a very common thing with heroic characters. I suppose I, I can't tell you the number of people who whose parents have been killed by bandits. And what's with the sheer amount of the strong silent types? <laughs> it's um. So I guess take a character like uh, Logan. Uh, Wolverine Mm -hmm. Um, characters that uh, have had those sort of tragic backgrounds it doesn't really make sense that they're all incredibly charismatic or they're all very uh, gregarious Mm. or uh, have a really witty sense of humor Mm. so the there's that type of role player that will just as as we experience that will just sort of stand there and wait until people approach them because Mm. I guess it doesn't make sense for the writer to have them go up and approach everybody Mm. Well, that was the one thing that really grabbed me, and and this is not not I'm not trying to to shit on the fun of role players here, but it was it was genuinely intriguing to me in terms of the time sink and investment that role players will put into their character. Because one thing I noticed, and and obviously for the listeners' benefit, if they don't happen to to watch the video that I'll put up, here's what happened: you and I obviously went into a tavern in Stormwind City. We mucked around in there for a little bit, and then we walked outside, and we found one. I think it was a rogue who was lying on the ground outside of the tavern and they were just laying there and I engaged with them and eventually they stood up and slowly started to speak to me and and I kept asking you was this person's end game just to sit there for however long it took until someone tried to engage them does that happen often yes very often it's it's another stereotype of the of the rp community of that of that brooding character that's too cool you know like like when you meet aragorn in the lord of the rings fellowship of the ring and the prancing pony he's just sort of sitting there and just kind of like watching and looking brooding smoking his pipe and stuff like that smoking his pipe and smoking his weed yeah exactly you'll you'll (laughs) see a lot of that and um yeah no it's it's a very very common thing and I guess one part to put into that too is yes, it is a timed up to just sort of sit there, but they're not just staring at their screens the whole time. When I'm RPing, I usually have something on my television that I'm watching and I'll just pause. Like I'll be watching a movie or a TV show and then I'll pause when it's my turn to write. So I guess that's what, um, makes the game a more enjoyable experience for them is they're more than happy to take the time and sit there and just devote hours and hours and hours and hours more to the game than perhaps other people might because it's that community feeling and playing out this as you say shy quiet melancholic role that accentuates the gameplay for them would that be fair to say yeah i mean it really comes down to just if if that's how they enjoy playing the game i mean more power to them 
What do you think is the most misunderstood part of the role playing community? That we all don't RP all of the time. Uh, I mentioned before that, you know, that hardcore epic role player, that guy that's always in character, and he will usually speak in that god awful, uh, you know, old English or Shakespearean English and things like that. And most people don't do that. Most people will play the game. We, we love to PvP. I was very good at PvP and Burning Crusade, for example. I'm, you know, my uh, my buddy and I in two v twos made it two thousand plus ranked. So, you know, we didn't RP our way through all of that. I think, yeah, the biggest misconception is that we all we do is RP. It, it bleeds into the entire effect of the game, and you know, we talk with that. Uh, what would be an example of that terrible if he, you know, I attack thee, and you know. Things like that. We no one real most players don't role players rather don't talk like that and don't RP all the time. Now, just mentioning PvP, and obviously you said a couple of times now that you really love PvP and spend a lot of time with it. When you do things like PvP on a role playing server, I'm guessing again, like instances that there's not a lot of role playing going on. Like you're not running at someone in a battleground going like for Stormwind or anything like that, are you? Um, I, the only thing that uh, some people do, um, the only thing that I ever had was in Wrath of the Lich King. I had a a macro for attached to my blade storm that every time I use blade storm, it just yelled, I'll take you all on. But that's, that's the only time, but no, I, I don't. And most people don't, they're too focused on trying to kill Horde because that's the point of PVP. Sure. Now, I mean, is there any kind of banter going on? Let's say you jump into Warsong Gulch and you're waiting for the timer to go down and for the gates to go up. Is there any kind of banter pre-game, like, in, in character? No, no, not usually, because it, 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 there's also the the thing where, like, for example, if my character lived and resided in Stormwind, it wouldn't really make sense for him to just instantly teleport to Warsong Gulch all the time. I mean, sure, you have mages that can create portals, but... Um, the that sort of jump would be more of an out of character one than anything. It doesn't really, you can't just like snap your fingers or click your heels together and be in Kansas again. You know? Right. Now you mentioned that, that story of that really interesting um, gnome with the limp that you heard that story. What's the most invested that you've ever actually personally seen someone uh, be with role playing? In the, in the context of gameplay or just the effort that they put into their characters? Let's say in the context of uh, either or, who, who have you come across who was easily the most dedicated role player you've ever seen? It was. Uh, it would definitely be a, a guild leader of mine that uh, was also an artist and drew like tons of things about their character. Like they had written out chunks and chunks and chunks and chunks and chunks of their character's backstory, and then actually, as an artist, very like skillfully, like really actually good art drew and captured these moments of their character's backstory. And this must have taken this person tons of hours um, from gameplay. That that story of the gnome is the most hardcore I've ever heard. I've never experienced anything close to that. And is this a guild that you're still currently in? Uh, no, not anymore. This, this guild's been, been dead for a little while. Okay. Like five, six years now it's been gone. Okay. Now, what's the worst effort or worst attempt at role-playing that you've ever seen? Oh, there's just so many examples of that because you, you instantly sort of go to the people who create characters just to troll, like, you know, your RP creepers. Right. But have you seen someone actively like trying, but just unfortunately not quite getting it? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many people that will talk in in lead speech or tech speech um, in RP. They're, They're still trying, you know, like, but they just don't write particularly well. It's usually, I, I think I even started there at some point, so I can't be overly judgmental to these people. But I'd say it's, it's younger kids that are trying to get into RP or see sure. it for the first time and are curious about it. Sure. Do you get the odd mistake, like the night elf character who's like, I was born in Stormwinds to a human mother and father, and I'm loving life. And it's like, uh, dude, I think you got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll, that'll happen a lot. And that, that's where... Uh, uh, maybe a, a, a more light role player might get away with that within that community, but a heavy RP would immediately point out that it doesn't work in lore and will usually try to hold themselves and the characters around them to actually, you know, being possible 
in World of Warcraft. Well, just quickly, now that you've said the magic word of law, how much uh, knowledge of the law would you suggest people have if they are considering starting a role playing character? Again, depends on which degree. Heavy RPers would definitely have a lot more. Uh, it really comes down to the individual user for how much effort they'll put into it. They'll usually put enough in to create their character's backstory, and that's about it. So, like, you know, for example, a night elf couldn't be born in the Eastern Kingdoms because, uh, you know, the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor had been separated, and the first human didn't see a night elf until the Third War sort of thing. So they would just, you know, look into that sort of backstory. Now, a, a guild leader or an RP event leader would obviously need to know a lot more about lore so that the events that they're running don't uh, conflict with lore. What's the best example of role-playing or, or the coolest thing that you've ever seen in the game? It would be like a, just a really well-crafted storyline um, where it, I can't think of the, the exact one off the top of my head, but there have been several storylines that I've participated in, one that I've even ran myself that you know, it, it, like like reading a good book, and especially because you're more attached to your characters or as attached to your character as you are to characters in books, when, for example, you know, a character dies in a you know, really uh, sort of sad moment or epic moment and things like that, you, you feel it as much as you do when you're reading a book. So I'm guessing that you come across more often than perhaps people think some exceptionally high writing skills from people. Oh, absolutely. I've, I, I was piss poor when i first started but thanks to some really good friends of mine who are excellent writers like you know uh, english majors in school even like i've i would consider myself an excellent writer now as far as just you know description and uh, understanding of character development and things like that it's yeah there's there's a ton of very very high quality writers mm. what's the oddest thing you've seen in terms of someone's backstory or attempt at role playing in the game I don't know if this is the, the I, I, maybe it's the, it's the funniest, but we in one storyline I had we had a villain that was a gnome warlock, and just trying to imagine this little tiny gnome with a really high pitched voice saying all these evil things was was pretty funny to me. So <laughs> okay. I, I guess that would be the best answer I had. Like, you know, I will kill you and you know <laughs> burn your face off and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> And no, we don't actually say the lines. This is all written. That was just a bad impersonation. No, now I'm hoping you do. That's the best known voice I've heard for a while. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> now that we've touched on oddities, uh, just just bear with me for a moment here because there's a topic that everyone has been patiently waiting for us to get to. Now, there's a dingy back room here at Countdown to Classic Headquarters where the cats aren't allowed into, and I think that's where we're going to have to go to discuss this next topic. So let's touch on it without perhaps touching ourselves, the topic of erotic role-playing. What is it? How does it work if it doesn't speak for itself? All right. The most simplified way to describe erotic role-play is it's people instead of, uh, you know, talking about killing bandits or their tragic backstory, it is people writing, having sex with each other. So, you know, uh, so I won't make you give I've us an never, example. <laughs> I've never participated, but I imagine it works very similarly to where, you know, if you're writing how you're slack hacking someone's head off, you're writing about how you're inserting your penis into somebody else. Okay. Now, you just mentioned, I, I was obviously going to ask how much have you engaged in it? You said you haven't dabbled in it at all. Is that right? No, I've never. Um, it, there, There is a thing in RP where characters will develop romantic connections. That's just like any storyline. That's, you know, that, that is something people RP out. I have. Hmm. But I would normally just default to a fades to black. Okay. Well, can... Which is like in, you know, your PG-13 movie, it just fades to black and then it cuts to the next day or whatever. That's King, what I've done. King Mike, I'm going to have to ask you, what's the furthest you've honestly gone with it? Um, uh, I have, you know, in the context of that romantic relationship I was talking about, mm -hmm. my character having, like, I have had him make out with someone. Mm -hmm. But that's as far as it's gone. Stop, stop, you fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Nobody's listening. It's just us. You can tell us. It's all good, bro. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm being straight honest with you, man. <laughs> all right. All right. Now, I, let's... I mean, yep. I've looked at pornography. I'll be honest there. It's just I can't get behind writing it. 
Okay, fair enough. Now, let's speaking of the magic word of pornography, obviously that word porn, talk to people about porn sheer. What is it? All right. So, I mean, I guess starting with, with background, I can't remember which server it started on, but it was MoonGuard wasn't a server in, in, in vanilla. It came a little bit later on. So the original Pornshire, which is in Goldshire, it's in the Lion's Pride Inn, is where a whole bunch of people, well, it started as players would go in as naked night elves and naked humans and dance, and then uh, other people would be standing and watching and then whisper each other and proposition each other for sex. Mm. Um, it started across a whole bunch of different servers. I, I, some people might know where it started better than others, but then once Moonguard came into existence, that just very quickly became the hub and center of it. So Pornshire isn't on every RP server. It is only on Moonguard. And it is, uh, well, when you go see that video, it, it, it's honestly something everyone should see because it's kind of funny to look at. Oh, it absolutely blew me away. Now, I, for all you listeners, I'm so innocent that I knew nothing of all of this. I'd never heard of Pornshear before. I'd never heard of Moonguard. I hadn't even really considered role-playing much more than a bit of a novelty for myself personally because I'm not interested in it. But obviously, in speaking with you, we jumped on, we checked it out, and I could not have been more surprised by what I saw. You warned me many times, like, you don't understand how many people you're about to see. And I was like, ah, shut up, I can handle it, as if there's going to be, like, you know, a dozen people in there. And it was packed to the rafters, and I couldn't believe it. But the interesting that you, thing that you've said is, so I wonder why it's just by pure happenstance that only on Moonguard this became a thing. It's not on other servers. I think it just became so famous that people that were looking for erotic roleplay just very quickly realized, I don't have to go anywhere else. I can just go to Moonguard. Mm. Now, when we talk about um, uh, porn sheer, obviously, I presume it got so popular because you can create a level one character and walk straight there from the human starting zone. So it's all quite easy within a couple of minutes to get set up. Is there a horde equivalent? I don't actually know. Um, I, I can tell you that it, there is no Horde equivalent on the scale as Goldshire. Um, I, I don't know if they actually have a, a miniature hub of their own or not. I, I, I don't know that. There's no porn grandma? <laughs> <laughs> no, there there definitely is no more. Come on. All that's, right, I'm I'm gonna start that up. That that's that's one of my goals for classic <laughs> now. To happen, get some sexy orcs and trolls going at it. <laughs> Absolutely, riding on each other. Absolutely. Okay, so. With erotic roleplay, uh, appreciating that you're not exactly the go-to authority on that, or so you tell us, but um, is you said before that like erp or erping is a little bit of a dirty word for those that get engaged in it. Is that right? Um, there's there's a reason that most people will roll level one characters when they're going to do it. It's because they don't want other people to know that they're doing it. Um, most people won't be there on their main character. Now, it's easier on, on retail WoW to have a max level character. It, it, you can do it much quicker. But, um, yeah, it's, it, it is a little bit of a dirty word because it gives the, the you know, those of us who RP a little bit more seriously and are doing it for, you know, the story aspect, uh, it kind of gives it a bad name. So we, yes, it, it is a little bit of a dirty word. Now, there are people um, on the heavy RP side that, that will or, Herb, just not in Pornshire, and they'll usually do it in like Whisper or Party in a private place where no one's going to know that they're doing it. Mm. Well, I meant to ask. Um, I, I appreciate that you're not sure what the Horde does, but let's say for the Alliance, are there other areas in the game outside of Goldshire where this kind of stuff, not to that degree, but still kind of happens? No, no, it, it's centralized in, in Goldshire, and, and by proxy, it's spread all across Elwynn Forest. So if you're running around Elwynn Forest or flying around Elwynn Forest, you'll randomly find two naked people sitting on top of each other. Behind a tree. Behind a tree. Excellent. Against a tree. On a tree. Under a bridge, on the bridge, yep. Next exactly to Hogger. Everywhere. Got it. Okay. Now, I'm not sure if you know this, but are there, like, forums or anything for porn sheer meetups, like Lost Connections ads or anything like that? I I don't know. On the farm side, I, I, I don't know. I don't think so. The main thing is uh, I mentioned that uh, add-on that people have called uh, MyRP or I think there was another one. I can't remember its name right now. 
But um, I was reading, for example, in the, the stream, things that players had posted on that because it gave players the ability to write out their um, list of, of, of uh, fetishes, I suppose you could call them. So I think that's the main way that people go about it is with that add-on as opposed to forms. Because, again, I think people are too embarrassed to post else, uh, outside of the game about it. Mm, and you, you mentioned fetishes, and, and that's sort of the next little road that I'm going to go down. I'm so sorry to do this to you, but it does intrigue me so much. It's, it's fine. When you and I jumped in, jumped into uh, Goldshear and we went inside the, uh, the, 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 obviously the Lion's Pride Inn or whatever it is. So we went inside the Lion's Pride Inn and we went upstairs. Event- well, let, let's start with what happened. We walked in. I was blown away. And if you recall, I think it took all of about 14 seconds before someone whispered me with a proposition. Yeah, and you're in, you know, naked human female, and someone was interested. Absolutely. And uh, I, I found that a bit of fun. But we went upstairs eventually, and we found one person just sitting by themselves on the bed in the bedroom upstairs. And I thought, oh, God, here we go. Is this like the S&M room or something? And you looked into the, the my RP uh, add-on, and that person had a full description of all their kind of fetishes. Is that right? Yeah, it was that guy, and then went downstairs and picked somebody else random. But yeah, yeah, he had a list of all his. So obviously, people do get quite involved with it. But do you know? And only please answer as as much as you're able to. If you're not sure, just let me know. But I guess outside of the like outside of the fetishes, is do people go and get in game wives and husbands via role playing? Uh, yeah. Yeah, not. I mean, in a, in a lot of senses, it's not as extreme as just like you know, on on the erotic role play spectrum. There's a lot of I, just on the heavy RP bit, where I mentioned before those romantic relationships that develop between characters and RP similarly mm. as they do in in books and movies. But yeah, yeah, no, definitely that does and, happen. My character has been married. And, well, it, you you make it sound like your character is no longer married. What happened? And it's still, it, I, I I haven't. Uh, role played her in a long time because uh and the person that he's married to is actually a very close friend of mine um but we just don't play the game together anymore so okay no worries now uh, with marriage i guess comes i presume there's world of warcraft role-playing cheating the, yeah <laughs> I, i'm sure there is <laughs> and flo i mean i'm getting well outside of your uh uh, area of knowledge now, but I'm I'm wondering if there's like World of Warcraft swingers groups, like they get together for group play and stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> I mean, for in the erotic role play community, I wouldn't put it past them. In the heavy OP bit, I I don't think there is as much of a cheating thing because, uh, well, maybe there is. I don't know. I've okay. never experienced that though. I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't want to mess with the community too much. Obviously, it's all tongue in cheek and a bit of fun. But I, I would love to create a character and sort of jump on, run into uh, the Lion's Pride uh, one day and just sort of say, hey, uh, I'm a 35-year-old human hunter who fights the forces of evil during the day and enjoys water sports at night. And, and have someone say, dude, that's some really cool role-playing. And I'd be like, who's role-playing? <laughs> but... Um, okay, we'll move on. Now, if everyone just gets their hand off of it, we've moved on from the sexy part of the podcast. We'll get back to a couple of sexy. listeners. I don't know if it's sexy, <laughs> yet, but all right. We'll get to some more listener questions. Now, uh, listener of the show, Pal Furis, and Countdown to Classic Council member asks this. Um, this might be a bit cheeky to throw out there, but uh, does what happens in Goldshear stay in Goldshear? Yes. Players who... <laughs> roll those level one characters for that specific purpose, obviously don't want it to get out. Okay. So yes, what happens in Pornshire stays in Pornshire. Okay. Now next from listener two, um, has there ever been a time while role playing that things went too far and they're saying to be more specific, something that made you uncomfortable or was out of the norm? Um, not with me personally, because thankfully the the guild that I had joined initially that you know exposed me to RP was was a you know a group of really good people. Um, I do know of a story that I heard of a of a YouTuber's first experience RPing that uh, is along that. If you're okay with me just reciting that for you, yeah, sure. So this guy had his first experience RPing. I I don't remember exactly how he got into it, but he had his first experience and he loved it so much. They were like fighting a trog invasion outside of Ironforge. 
And so the next day he decided that, you know, he enjoyed it so much. So he wanted to find more people to RP with. So he wasn't on an RP server, but he put out a general chat, like, you know, looking for someone to role play with. And so this person responded, it was a night elf female. And so they were just, you know, going out and role playing at like in a tent in a camp situation. And <laughs> he, you know, they were just doing the usual sort of banter. And then he had his character go to sleep for whatever reason. Mm. And this night elf female just started, you know, pulling his pants down or <laughs> writing that they were pulling his pants down and then, you know, touching him and all this other sorts of stuff. And oh, this, dear. this guy was saying he was like 13, 14 at the time. So he had no idea what to do. So he just like, you know, plug pulled essentially and exited the game. But, oh my uh, gosh. That's, that's the most awkward experience I've ever heard of. I can imagine. Also giving, also giving Earp a bad name. For sure. Now, to also ask King Mike, what's the best experience that you ever had role playing in the game if there was anything in particular? Um, there was a time that uh, one of my alts, uh, a character that I, I, I wrote for for a little bit, um, he died in a storyline. And uh, just the how well that was sort of played out and, uh, you know, like a, your favorite character dying in a good book and things like that. It actually had an emotional effect on the people that I was playing with. And I thought that was, uh, I had a lot of fun writing that out. I was kind of uh, diabolical in how I killed him and like no one saw it coming. And I don't know, I, I enjoyed that quite a bit. Okay, next we've got a, a question from listener Palfurus again, who asked this, and we, 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 lightly, we lightly touched on this one earlier, but this one gets a little bit more specific. Are there any specific types of speech patterns that are used when role-playing, or does one limit themselves to what is commonly perceived to be medieval speech, or are there plenty of dudes and bras in the role-playing world as well? So there won't be dudes and bras in outside of perhaps maybe light RP. Um, but for the most part, no, you won't see anybody saying dude or anything like that. Um, for the most part, it's just normal speech, actually. Medieval language, uh, That's I guess that's a bad stereotype that people think that, you know, we talk with that old English that, you know, your yees and your these and your, you know, mm. yonders and whatever. Mm. Um, most people, it's, you know, just like they write their characters like they would – say it, I suppose, but then obviously knowing that they're not going to say dude. Um, but that also lends itself to say like, so you have dwarves who kind of speak with a little bit of a Scottish accent and Dre and I who speak with, you know, a little bit of a Russian accent and things like that. <laughs> so sometimes people will write to sort of create that. So like, let's just say their Janai doesn't pronounce H's. They'll write to sort of simulate that, but not everybody does that. Most people, it'll just be uh, you know, writing a, a a text message with proper grammar, I suppose, is the best way that I can say it. It's it's just normal. And you use your imagination to hear your voice, I suppose. Sure. Okay, final listener question from listener Iron Lion, who asked this. What is the typical suspension of disbelief that allows for things such as waiting on respawns or two people having the same unique weapon or armors or things like that? So for the for waiting on respawns and all that sort of thing, that I, most people aren't in character all the time. So, you know, my character isn't camping, um, you know, for some r rare monster or uh, camping, a, you know, a horde or anything like that. So that side of it, it, it is only for your, you know, I, I call them the hardcore epic role player. Um, most people don't do that sort of thing. But as far as people having the same sort of, you know, really rare sword or uh, the same armor. Um, in vanilla, this was more of a thing you just kind of shrugged off because there's only so many items in the game, you know, and there's only so many items in the game that look cool. So characters that have the same armor, it, it wouldn't be, like, let's just say they have, um, I think it was called Destiny. Destiny was this really rare level, like 52 or something, epic two-handed sword drop. So if multiple players had that, Multiple players, both of them wouldn't say, oh, I wield destiny. It would just be their sword, you know? So it's kind of just, uh, you have to work with, uh, I guess, the environment that you have. And <laughs> there is obviously going to be some overlap. 
Sure. Now, final few questions for me, and then we'll get to the fun stuff. Uh, do you plan on role playing in Classic when it comes out? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And with regard to that, on the controversial changes, no changes topics, are there any role playing changes that you'd like to see Blizzard implement with Classic? No, no. I, I, uh, I mean, I don't think that there's anything that they could do that would, or that they even frankly consider doing that I would want them to. I think with the add-ons that we have, and um, as long as we get a, an RP server, or better yet, an RP PvP server, I'll be pretty happy. I, I lean, if you're wondering, more no changes. So You don't want to see the condom bowl out the front of the Lion's Pride? <laughs> I, I'd rather see that in retail, actually, because that's where it exists. <laughs> Shame them a little bit. That'd be funny. Okay. And finally, what tips do you have for people who are considering role-playing but are a little hesitant to jump in? Uh, it would definitely be to find the right guild. And normally, obviously, you'd have to do that on forums online. So you can, you know, search uh, WoW and then your server name, RP Guilds, and you'll usually find some sort of listing for a whole bunch of different guilds. And I would suggest finding one that leans more light or medium or says, you know, like a lot of guilds will specifically advertise, like open to new players, like welcome, like, we're, you know, we're, we're, we'll teach you how sort of thing. If you're looking to get involved, I would look specifically for those sorts of guilds because there are people that are eager to help build the community from the ground up by teaching new players how to how to role play correctly. And there you also find people that are, you know, more open minded and again, willing to take the time to teach you how to do it properly as opposed to just turn their backs and things like that. Okay, King Mike, we've gotten through the interview, and I'm sure all of us are a lot better versed on role-playing now in the game. But now it's time for anger management. Each episode, I sit down with the interviewee and ask them to rant about a particular subject within the game that really irks them. So, King Mike, what is it about World of Warcraft that makes you angry? Well, <laughs> it's definitely RP griefers. So, you know, people who uh, take the time and, frankly, waste their own time to create a level one character, of, you know, usually a gnome with pink hair, naked, and just dance, um, and, you know, say mean things, and, you know, it just sort of berate and annoy, and just sort of get in the way as much as possible with people that are actually RPing. It's just kind of one of those things of, don't you have anything better to do? I mean, I understand people not, I understand people not understanding why people role play, but to then waste your own time because, you think it's funny to annoy people uh yeah it's it's bullshit man okay well done and with that said now it's time for the hot seat Each Wednesday, I ask the interviewee to take part in about 10 fun hypothetical questions about the game. So, King Mike, you ready for the hot seat? Let's do this. Okay. Question number one. Ruling out when is Classic coming out and will there be changes and will there be patch progression? If you could ask one specific Classic-related question of the developers right now, what would it be? Are they going to do any class balancing to make certain classes more viable at different things? Okay, next up. I'm sure you're quite familiar with the game. Fuck, marry, kill. Yep. Okay, three options here. Fuck, marry, or kill. I'm going to give you three locations for role-playing within the game. Pawnshear, Stormwind, and Ironforge. Go for it. Well... Obviously, you gotta fuck corn juice. That's what the <laughs> fucking's happening, right? Um, just kill the Iron Forge because I didn't really do much there. I definitely marry Storm. That's the you know, human city, man. My character's human. Okay, fantastic. Now, if you had to go on an eight hour road trip with one NPC from the game, who would it be and why? You know, I'd honestly have to say Thrall. Because even though I play Alliance, Thrall's always been one of my favorite characters. And 
you know, Chris Metzen, the guy who, like, voice acted, like, also had such a cool voice. Just, like, listening to Thrall talk for eight hours would certainly pass the time very quickly. Interesting. I've obviously done some episodes on the show all about the backstory of Thrall. And the one thing that I mentioned was I was shocked at how little positivity there was about Thrall on the web. Like everyone just hated Thrall. And so it's refreshing to have someone like you come along and say, no, no, he's actually pretty damn cool. I think that most people don't like Thrall because of uh, he just sort of abandoned the the horde in a way, you know, like the whole cataclysm story. I, I think that's when I started to see such a negative connotation with Thrall. Because back in vanilla, I'd like, you know, because of, you know, obviously he's a central character in Warcraft 3, I'd never heard of any sort of really negative stuff about Thrall. I, so, yeah. No, definitely. He, his, his story arc uh, went a bit off the rails for some people later down the track. But moving on, what's the meanest thing that you've ever done in the game? Um, <laughs> I've, I've ganked and camped uh, many many little hordlings um numberless one could say i see so is it, was this with herthen is herthen a bit of an asshole not in character but i'm kind of a little bit of an asshole yes <laughs> okay now what class would you say you kick ass at and what class would you say you suck at i'm an awesome warrior uh arms warrior for pvp i've been really good at that for such a long time. Uh, the one class that I've actually never played past level 10 is Priest, so I blow at playing Priest. Okay. Do you have a proudest in-game moment? Yes, absolutely. So, um, my a buddy of mine, who uh, he's a feral druid, we just randomly decided one day that we wanted to attack Thunder Bluff. Uh, this would have been during Wrath of the Lich King. And the two of us attacked Thunder Bluff, and we, I forget which of the, it was one of the, the exterior things that the Bridge going to, but we killed every NPC in there. We killed countless horde that came to try to stop us. Like, the two of us killed probably something like 10 to 15 people over the course of like 10, 15 minutes or so. And it, we, it, I still look back on that fondly, because we just destroyed, two of us just destroyed everyone in Thunder Bluff. And do you have a most embarrassing in-game moment? Yeah, yeah. Um, causing the wipe on Anixia in vanilla was uh, was a thing. I, uh, <laughs> Something in particular <laughs> you did? That initially that the eggs spawned, um, you know, little whelps. And yeah, I wiped our raid once and got berated a little bit. You had a little go at the eggs, did you? Yeah. Yeah, not quite like Leroy, but, you know. <laughs> okay. What's your best guess as to the release date of Classic WoW? Um, my initial hope when I heard was that it would be before Battle for Middle Earth. Battle, Battle, Battle for Middle Earth? I can't wait for that game. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> But before, just to sort of handle the content lull, that usually happens between expansions, but now that that's obviously not happening, I would say probably um, uh, four or so months after, or uh, after the launch battle for Azeroth, or at BlizzCon. Okay. Now, ruling out the opening five minutes of the game when you were dropped in and you were wide-eyed noob, what was the moment that you fell in love with World of Warcraft? It was uh, Westfall. Um, I was terrible at the game, obviously, and I just, I don't know, I loved the struggle of just trying to kill the 15 harvesters in that one of the Westfall quests. I, I, it was like Saldine's farm or something like that. I don't know, it was so stupidly hard for me because I didn't understand the concept of gearing at the time. Um, but I don't know, there's just such immense satisfaction and finally completing that quest and killing those damn harvesters that uh yeah no i was hooked from then on okay final question tell me why you king mike role-playing extraordinaire are most excited for world of warcraft classic i think you you actually put it one of the best ways it's it's kind of like being able to like reverse time and go back and experience something again that you thought you would never be able to 
that in your mind you just remember so fondly and it was just this amazing time in your life. Um, and I, I have played a little bit of Nasaria, so I know that the game is still as much fun and as special as it was then. But just being able to go back and experience that again, uh, just, yeah, just rolling back time to do it again, it just, yeah, that's the best answer I can give. I'm just so excited to just experience it all again and then also to experience what I missed at the time too. So to be able to, you know, as an adult, actually remember completing certain parts of content and not just specific parts of it. Absolutely. Now you touched on, obviously I, I mentioned to members of the discord recently when uh, talking about this very question that if people were wondering, uh, what my thoughts on the answer to that question would be, cause I asked so many of you interviewees as the final question to the show. And I've said, it's very much like a, a sliding doors moment for me. And I picture myself as Gwyneth Paltrow standing on the train platform, just sort of wondering which uh, direction your life can go in and which door you go through, but you get to do it all over again. And perhaps this, time you get to make different choices and have different results and that's why i think exactly like you've hit on everyone should be super excited for classic because you're going back to a moment in time that was gone and we don't get to do that very often in life obviously yeah no exactly that Okay, King Mike, I cannot thank you enough. Thank you so much for coming on the show. As we mentioned, if people want to find you, they can jump in the Countdown to Classic Discord and say hello. But just thank you so much again. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thanks for uh, giving me a chance to hopefully dispel some unfortunate things about uh, what people think RP is. Absolutely. Okay, thanks, dude. We'll talk to you later. Yeah, cheers. And that's been the show for today, everyone. Big thanks again to King Mike for taking the time, not only for that interview, but also for the Twitch session that we alluded to a few weeks ago when he held my hand through Mood Guard. And I swear, that's all that happened. But when I upload this particular podcast up to YouTube, I will have the footage of that session. And also, I'll put it up separately. So please, in a few days' time, maybe by the start of next week, check out the count down to classic page over at youtube for the full video of that hilarious session and please do have a look it's really well worth it and there's quite a few laughs in there we have a bit of fun at gold cheer but then we get to a bit of the serious stuff in Stormwind, and i try to sort of feel my way into role playing it's all a bit of fun but just before i let you go i've got a few shout outs to get through and then a little bit of light show news so shout out to the countdown council members borzen palfurus seven winters tsunami wilson Mart, Velarco. Thank you so much for your support. The show would not be the same without you. Also, a big shout out to new patron Sneaky Goose. Thank you so much for your support of the show, Sneaky Goose. Now, I'm away this weekend for a huge family birthday party on the sunny Gold Coast, but Countdown shall return next week, bigger and better than ever. We'll cover off on the forums once again, and then we'll be diving into the history of Black Rock Mountain. Not the dungeons and raids, just the mountain itself at at first, maybe we'll get to the dungeons and raids later. Pending how things go interview wise, there might be two lore episodes next week. We shall see how I go. But for now, that's everything, folks. Thanks so much for listening and continuing to support Countdown to Classic. I'll be back with you all next week. See ya.